Hey, everybody. Welcome to another College Conversation. I'm Harlan Cohn, and today I am with an incredible group of students, panelists, dynamic individuals from Central Oregon Community College. We have Marley, we have Raul, we have Elijah, we have Stacy, we have Jaceline, and we are going to learn all about these incredible people, their experiences, and I hope that you to take their experiences and apply it to your own life. So what I want to know is everybody's dream. I want to understand who you are and why you are at COCC. So let me start with Stacy. Stacy, let me know what is your dream, Stacy? My dream is to be a middle school teacher in the subject of Spanish because I feel like being a teacher, I could support my students and um, help them in their education. I want to know about you, Jocelyn. What is your dream? Well, my dream is to have a lasting impact on my community. Um, like our community suffers a lot of addiction, a lot of um, poverty, a lot of you know high unemployment rates. And so I want to help the bigger picture. So I really want to do a community program, community advocacy, work with the youth. Being a mother of six, I really have a vested interest in this. I am a um, substance abuse prevention specialist working with tribal youth here in Warm Springs. And so I just want to really get the education, get the credentials and get the, um, you know, the platform I need to go farther into the future with my dream. So COCC will help you to do that because you'll get what type of degree? What, what are you working towards? So I'm working towards my AAOT. I used to be a daycare teacher and eventually I want to go back to that when I'm older and, you know, get tired of the, the fast lane. I want to go back to the babies. And so sociology will help me, you know, in many sectors, um, many different ways and just really get me um, on the right path. Terrific. Awesome. Elijah, what is your dream? I'd like to be a physician scientist, specifically a forensic psychiatrist and a behavioral neuroscientist, because I'm trying to bridge the gap between what we know about how the brain responds to trauma, drugs, and all of the different things that are related to what we call criminal behavior, and use that research to improve the ways that we think about criminal rehabilitation and really just supporting people who are coming from a, a lot of different walks of life and a better way than ostracizing them and throwing them in a jail cell. What inspires your journey? I grew up popping in and out of homelessness and a lot of my family members and friends uh, ended up in prison, ended up in jail, struggled with substance abuse disorders, um, different mental health challenges. So of learning those lessons growing up and thinking about how you can take them and improve them for the communities that you're, you're seeking to return to and be a part of and really support. So how do you go from homeless to going to COCC to then attending Lewis and Clark? I mean, that's a pretty remarkable trajectory. Um, you take a lot of time, a lot of time, and you really dig in deep to the people who believe in you, or not dig in deep. I don't know if that's the best way to describe it, but just really, really focused on trying to find a community for yourself. <laughs> um, uh, I barely graduated high school. I uh, didn't think that I would go to college. I I don't think anyone ever expected me to go to college. And so when I finally met someone who did, I I took their word for it. I took what they think and I really ran with it. <laughs> and I continued to find people who look at the world, you know, cool and to did the best that I could to make the and find that support and continue to use education as a way of kind of liberating myself from those cycles of poverty and, you know, that glass ceiling that you know, many, many are familiar with when you're coming from uh, rural, um, different, different areas of the country that uh, face a lot of, I guess, uh, socioeconomic challenges. So that's the best way to describe it broadly. 
Is there a particular person or has there been a group? Has there been some, some organization that's really stood behind you? I am a part of the Ford Scholars Program, which is unique to the uh, state of Oregon. They extend also a little bit into some counties in California and Washington, I think. But uh, basically, it's like a scholarship for people who have had to overcome uh, really hard challenges to pursue their education. I want to say her official title is Outreach Coordinator for COCC, but her name is Lindsay Bukerney. And she just came to my high school and met with me and was like, you should go to COCC. And I hadn't had anyone talk to me about college before. It was really the first time for me. I, felt, I took her up on it. I, I went to COCC. I ended up working for her as a student ambassador for the college. And that that's really what I mean when it's you find people who see something in you that you can't see in yourself. Because she reached out to you. Then you went to COCC, and then is that when you afford foundation scholar? So uh, high school, barely graduated, really bad grade for any scholarships or funding to pay for college. And so my time at COCC was really an opportunity to find out what it meant to be a student for someone who really just like completely had no con of what it meant to sit down and study could barely do algebra when I got out of high school. Like I was, I had to, it was a really steep learning curve. And so COCC was that, that transition point for me where I got to learn a little bit about myself and my interests and also learn about what it meant to be someone who's pursuing education as a means of like, you know, change. I think the term is not changing your stars, but changing your trajectory in the world like seeing education as a way out of whatever situation you were in. Then the Ford Foundation piece, did that come in once you were at COCC? Then they paid for they paid for everything? Yes, you can buy once to like be uh, a Ford scholar as you're transitioning from uh, COCC to um, like a four-year institution where you get your BA or BS you're interested in. And so I got it that second year that I was uh, finishing up at CCC. Right. So you were a student who barely graduated high school. Then you went to COCC and you found an incredible amount of support. And then that's how you were able to then go to Lewis and Clark and continue to pursue your, your degree. That's, that's, that's the story, right? That's the story. That's it. Yeah. So from being homeless to then pursuing this dream is, is really remarkable, Elijah. Hey, if, if there's someone out there who's watching this, who is not in a great place, who doesn't have a stable home life, who's in that place in high school where they're really looking for direction, um, you know, what, what can you say to that person to help them to find that uh, bit of, of, of inspiration to get to this next place? College in a lot of different ways, and it's often portrayed as this thing that you have to do to be something or be someone um, in the same sense that uh, you're like a, a teen and everyone's talking about careers. What do you want to do with your life? It's constantly there. And so if I had to give advice to anyone, I would just say, uh, take your time. You know, it's, you can't really pursue anything that you're passionate about until you know who you are as a person. And you have really found peace with whatever, personal like challenges you may be facing. So home life, unstable, you know, finances, unstable, doing your best to find out what it means to be like happy is probably the first step. You know, you can always find a, like something that makes you happy for me. It was, and just finding a way to get out of whatever space that you're in and take some time for yourself to think about what you want to do. And then from there, you can just trust yourself and kind of look for people who will support you. Why didn't you turn to drugs? Why didn't you turn to, you know, doing things that could land you in prison? Like how come that isn't the choice you made? You know, if I'm being 100% honest, I don't think I would say that I didn't. I would, I would, <laughs> I would say that I did. And I ran into the challenges and I, I fell in those, you know, those potholes. And 
I recovered from them and I learned humility and resilience. And I think the resilience is really the big piece there. Like everyone's going to make mistakes. You're all, you're going to do things in your life that you may regret or may not be proud of, but that doesn't change the fact that you have something to offer the world. And anyone who tells you otherwise is probably just way too stuck up or something. I don't, I don't know what, what it is, but the truth is, is that it's, it's a long road to whatever you're looking for in life. And you have to be willing to make mistakes and just get up and keep going. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And I love that you made other choices and you felt what that was about and decided that that wasn't for you. And I think it's really inspiring and, and, it's, and it's exciting. If there's anybody who's in a similar situation, Elijah, and, and wants to understand, you know, how you were able to do this and continue to do this. Are you comfortable with someone reaching out to you? Oh, of course. I, I would love for my, you can put my email uh, out there. I don't, I do not have any social media that is, uh, makes it a little harder to reach me, but I'm really great at answering my emails. And I'd love to be, you know, a source of just someone to talk to. I'd be happy to be that. We'll make sure to include that with with these videos. So that's really cool. Thanks. Thanks, Elijah. I appreciate that. Marley, I want to know your dream and how COCC is helping you to get there. My dream is to be an artist. Um, similarly to Elijah and a lot of us, um, I imagine a different world. Um, I really believe in like the liberation of, of holding a pencil um, and having an idea and, and writing it down um, and creating something with it. And art was always something that kind of took me out of reality and kind of into a place that I for myself um, and a place that I knew was, was super and, and a um, yeah, um, I've been studying art as therapy, art and psychology have been my main areas of study. Um, I, I have a little bit of anthropology and public health sprinkled in. Um, COCC has offered me a place to kind of explore things. Um, as I evolve in my education, I'm, I'm learning more about like where I'm wrong and where I need more education, where I need more insight or perspective or people to hear from, um, to hear their stories in order to, to make better work. Um, I, there's a huge responsibility to, to make work that is, um, makes people feel good and is unifying and, CCC really offers me the, the space to kind of explore myself so that I can do that. That's awesome. That's great. And I want to learn more about, about your experiences. You're, you're, so Marley, when are you graduating? Um, I have like eight credits left at COCC, which is so scary. Um, and then I have to start looking at transferring. Um, that's, yeah, my next big Thing that I'm almost preparing for. <laughs> and then as, as OSU cascades, is that, is that the path? Yeah, I think so. Um, the digital arts program is strong there and I'm really interested in um, digital arts. I didn't learn a lot about the philosophy behind it. Um, and I'm excited to like kind of explore the new realities and and ways like incorporate more classical media um, into digital worlds. Um, yeah, cool. That's I'm on. I'm letting it take me where it's going to take me right now. I think. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's great. Thanks. I appreciate it, Raúl. I I don't think I got to your dream. Can you? Help me to understand what's your dream, Raul? How's COCC helping you get there? My dream is to run a shop. I want to be a business owner. So that's kind of direction I'm heading. 
That's exciting. So you want to not only work, you want to, is it, is it cars? Is it trucks? Is it, is it, um, what, what would be your specialty? I've got a general understanding of cars and trucks, not so much yet the electric vehicles, EVs, all the newer stuff that's coming out, but that is going to be going to school for here in the fall is to take more of those advanced classes and apply it to what I know now and just keep moving forward. In Bend, the automotive program is roughly like a two year, two and a half year. Those are all the classes that are offered in Bend. There are five more classes that are offered in Redmond and those are the more advanced classes and more technical. And so that's kind of the other piece to my program in, in terms of, you know, automotive and technology. COCC has all of those different but to get the, the more advanced courses, you're going to then go to the other campus. And then when it comes to being a business owner, what, why are you inspired to be a business owner? Is, is there any particular reason? I don't know. I just feel like I can do it. I've been very fortunate to have family and friends that have kind of inspired me and, you know, had their hopes and just been very faithful that I can do anything. And it's actually kind of funny because my fifth grade teacher, it was her first year teaching. Uh, she's someone I still have contact to right now. And uh, when I graduated high school, she she was there for me. And same with college. And she actually lives, you know, down the road from the campus, which is nice because we would have, uh, she'd invite me for dinner. So she's someone that I really look up to. And uh yeah, I've just been very fortunate to have family and friends. So Stacy, tell me a little bit about how you chose COCC. What was your transition from high school and, and, and why was COCC the best choice for you? When I was 15 years old, they offered my charter school offered me a dual enrollment program thing where I could go and complete my high school classes at college. And my mom supported, you know, my dad supported it. My family were so supportive and then I had a few friends actually doing the same thing. And I was like, let me try it out. I'm going to see how it goes. And I decided to go in and I went full time and then I just loved it. And it helped me, you know, finish um, college and high school at the same time. And I just, I fell in love with um, going to CNCC and taking classes there. Were you actually going to COCC and taking classes or were you doing those classes in, in high school? Explain to us how that works. Yeah. So what I did was I took my classes at um, college. So I was like a student at college and normal student, normal, everything. And they were just on um, my high school was just getting those credits and using them as, as like um, high school credits. So you were 15 or 14 and you were going to COCC. Is that weird? It was a little weird at first, but having like COCC was very supportive and very um, open and they were very friendly and welcoming. And also having a few friends doing the same thing. I was like feeling more comfortable. And with time, I was like, this is cool. This is awesome. You know, I want to continue doing this. How many college credits had you completed? When I graduated from um, high school, I graduated with my associates. So now when you graduate high school with your associates, then do you go to a four-year university? Yes. Now I'm transferring on to either OSU or George Fox. And um, there I'll continue my four-year um, degree. And then you'll only need a couple years at these schools? Yeah, just two more years to get so my back. Amazing. So how so that's going to cost you half as much. Exactly. <laughs> right. And when you were at COCC, did you have to pay for that or was that part of your high school program? My high school program paid most of it. And then my parents paid a little bit and um, also scholarships, too. I got a few. How did you get the scholarships? I'm in the Latinx club here at COCC and they had a scholarship. They have a yearly scholarship. So that's where I would apply for a scholarship and they would, you know, I would get it. And um, I would pay for books with that. Sometimes it's like 500, some other years it was a thousand. To apply for that, was that just filling out some paperwork? Yeah, you had to be actively enrolled and um, 
like actively involved in the Latin club. And I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of other clubs that also offers scholarships if you're involved in their club. That's amazing. So you were able to pay for this and you got scholarships and you were still in high school. Stacey, did you have much of a social life? <laughs> um, not really. <laughs> I mean, I I had friends doing the same thing. So that's about, that's like where I was mostly getting my social life <laughs> because we would hang out during lunchtime and all that. And then, you know, I would come home with a lot of homework, but especially because I wanted to, my goal was to get my associates when I graduate my, with, when I graduate high school, I wanted to get my associate. So I was going full on, full force ahead, you know, <laughs> I was taking 19 credits at some point and like, yeah, it was, it was a challenge, but I enjoyed it. And I'm someone that likes to, you know, always be doing something. Do you suggest that other people do that or was that too much? I think it's a great opportunity. I mean, it's not, high schools don't really force you to go full force on. It was my option, but yeah, I mean, it's a great opportunity to get some classes done at CFCC or at any college and just like, um, you know, be doing both is, might be a challenge, but it's a great, great opportunity. How did you get involved with the Latinx club? So when I first went, they had a, there was a day where they had like tables set out at CCC and um, there was different clubs. And so I was walking around and I saw a Latin club table there. My mom was with me and she was like, oh, let's go check it out. You know, so I go with her and she actually got me involved in that. And I was like, okay, cool. And so when I started going, I loved it. You know, the community there and they, it's like literally a family there. And it was, it was amazing. That's great. So some of your closest friends, are they part of the Latinx club? They were, but you know, they graduated, some of them graduated before me and yeah, it was, it's cool. That's great. And when it comes to academics, did you ever use any of the academic support services on campus to help you deal with this heavy workload? Um, like tutoring. Yes. I went and I even, um, would, you know, to take, office hours with the professors. I would go and talk with them and, and also, um, yeah, just different tutorings for math and science and all that. You went, did any, has anybody else here taken advantage of like student support services and, and tutoring in that? So Elijah, you've done that. Um, Elijah, um, how does someone take advantage of the, of the tutoring services and, and academic support? Unless it has changed, there is like a full-on tutoring center in the basement of the library. Is that is that still ringing true? Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time there. Math was the biggest hurdle for me. So learning, learning algebra again. Yeah, you said you were terrible with algebra. Like you really struggled in high school, barely graduated. So when you're taking these classes at COCC and you're struggling, is it hard for you to get help? Are you doubting your abilities or is it easy to get the help that you need? I think it's two things. It's one, it's really easy to get the help that you need to CCC's designed to be a community. It's got the word community in the name, community college, you know, so you can reach out to people, but it's also a, a really safe environment. And it's really hard to focus on school when you're focusing on survival. And that was where I was at in high school. And I had the opportunity to no longer survive, thrive a little bit and focus on getting my education while I was at COCC. That's awesome. Were you involved with any clubs or organizations at COCC? I was involved with, uh, it's called COPE, but it's Central Oregon Psychology Enthusiasts. And so that was my first taste of like getting involved with science. I was not a STEM kid growing up at all by any means. And so uh, that was a really, it was a really meaningful experience for me. Um, but I also worked a lot. And so a lot of my experiences on campus came from uh, working in the admissions and records department and uh, serving as like a student ambassador. So I'd go to different high schools around the area and uh, lead tours and things like that. But it, it got me involved with the community. I got to meet a lot of people. And what about being in choir? Is that something you did as well? Oh, I almost forgot. Yes, that was actually, so I was really busy during that time period because I was working uh, full-time in like a restaurant. 
while going to school. But uh, that was that was like my relief. You know, if you have you have one thing that you really love to do and getting to sing and a choir, just like, I don't know, there's nothing more uplifting than music and seeing a bunch of people who are passionate about just using their voices as an instrument. It's so much fun. Was it hard to get involved with the CSCC choir? No, they're so sweet. <laughs> I, I honestly, I, I did choir in high school. Um, I think they voted me most likely to sing my way out of anything because I didn't go to school very often, but I would, I was pretty good at matching pitch. So no background in music, like could barely read music. And they took me in, you know, taught me the ropes. It was a great experience. That's amazing. Is that a place where you made a lot of friends? It is. I I went into college thinking that I was going to hopefully be a like a high school choir teacher or a high school music teacher of some sort. So that was a great, a great space for me. Yeah. It's remarkable how you found your way. I mean, I'm just fascinated on how you really established yourself. And was there anybody at COCC that really took you in that was that person who made this space safe? There is this group of just really kind women who work in the admissions and records department of COCC. And I was there as just like a little office aid filing cabinet. I moved to Bend on my own. I didn't have family and they just really took me in and made me feel at home. They let me, you know, have dinner with them. We became really close friends. I still, I still talk with them. They're really sweet. As much as just, it's kind of funny to say there was professors who whipped me into shape and I really needed that. Uh, Rebecca Walker Sands, uh, she's a psych professor. Um, she was the first person to ever tell me that what I was doing was not going to be good enough to, uh, you know, make it at an actual four-year university. And I badly needed to hear that because I was just skating by. And so, you know, it was, it was a really good mix of people who made me feel safe and at home, but also challenged me and pushed me to find out who I wanted to be and what I needed to work on to get there. What about Thanksgiving and holidays? Would they invite you to have dinner with them? I work uh, holidays traditionally, <laughs> um, but yes, yes, they're super sweet. Nice. That's great. Jacelyn, I want to understand your path of how you arrived at COCC. I know that it was, you, you didn't like leave high school and go right to COCC. Explain to me your path. I attended school right out of um, high school, college, and I just didn't have the financial support at home. I had a single father of five raised me and I had younger siblings. I'm the second oldest. Um, so I just went to college, dropped out, came home, started a family, been working through life. And then I just decided that I needed to set the example and really put my feet in front of the other and just get it done. And so I reached out to COCC, got my financial aid. I was awarded the COCC Foundation Scholarship and um, things just fell into place. So how many kids do you have? I have six kids, a husband, and it's busy. And you work? Yes, I work 40 hours a week full-time, but my tribe is very supportive. They allow me eight hours a work week to attend school. But still, you're managing a 40-hour work week, right? And then you're taking yeah. classes, and then you're taking care, care of, how old are your children? Our oldest is 10, eight, 10, 8, 6, 5, 4, and 2. I mean, that is extraordinary. How do you manage this, Jacelyn? Um, yeah, it is a lot. Um, I, I get overwhelmed, I get stressed, but just, you know, um, I was in the magazine for COCC, um, this past spring and my kids were like inspired <laughs> and I'm going to cry. Um, but it's just, I'm a first gen college student. Um, college really isn't something that a lot of people my age have accomplished, um, especially with the shoes that I am in. So, so it's just resiliency is the biggest thing, like pushing myself and trying to complete my goals. And so with the support of COCC and the foundation scholarship and everything that they uh, helped me with, it makes it easy. I don't have to worry about paying for anything. It's just getting my work done <laughs> and managing my time. And my husband is a godsend. He he manages the kids, gives me time to do things like this. Um, he manages to really keep me grounded. Like, hey, did you do your homework? I'm like, no, I better go read. You know, so um, I think the support system is the biggest thing and accountability. Like, I really hold myself accountable. So <laughs> yeah. how much more time do you have in your program? 
I'm, I'm about halfway through right now. So I'm taking 12 credits every course. Um, so considered full-time student um, and just stumbling my way through it. Math is my hurdle. I, I really need to, I went as far as algebra two in high school and that was over a decade ago. So really relearning everything and then building new skills on top of that. That's just, that's a challenge. Do you ever doubt yourself? I don't necessarily doubt myself. I do a lot of self-checking. Like, Jaceline, what are you doing? You know, you should have gotten a better grade on that. I really push myself. I'm the only sibling out of five that really has a struggle with addiction. I've never, you know, never done drugs. Um, I have siblings that have, and I have siblings that overcame. But um, so I just, I am a pusher. I push myself hard. Why have you not chosen to do drugs? Why wasn't that something that you you turn to I think just seeing the turmoil that comes from it you know in our community there is a lot I didn't have a mother because of it you know make I made the choice that that's not the life for me that's not something I want and it's not something I want for my kids for someone who is watching this and they are in the midst of addiction and don't really see a way out um, what is the way out? It's remembering your roots. It's remembering who, who created you and who paved the path for you. It's your choice. I tell my siblings this all the time. It's your choice. You can choose this path or you can choose this path. It's ultimately you. I chose books. I chose basketball. I chose my children. You can make your choice. Um, ultimately it's you. When it comes to COCC, have there been people who have really been there to support you and help you when you needed that help the most? Yes. You know, there are the strict professors and there are the compassionate um, professors. I've had, I worked at the Orange Tent, which is the COVID testing site all summer, doing prevention work there, you know, hey, mask up, use sanitizer, all this and that. And there's been a couple of times where I had to say, professor, I, I can't make this deadline. Can I reschedule? Um, in, in their total understanding. There are, um, Ken Rutgers has been a big help. He's my advisor. Um, and he actually, we bond over basketball. Um, and he's the one guy that I can go to, like, hey, um, I, I have this class, which one should I take? And, you know, it's, that's wonderful. How did you have that relationship? He was one of my professors. And then I knew that they were like, hey, we have this ex pro football player in sociology. Oh, that's cool. You know, I played football too growing up. And so I had this professor, I say, like, hey, uh, I can't meet this dead, this um, Zoom. Can I reschedule or can I um, schedule um, a, le- a later time? And he's like, yeah. And then he's like, you're from Warm Springs. We start talking about basketball. We have like six kids a, kids a year from Warm Springs get signed to play college basketball. Um, I actually was a walk-on in college at Blue Mountain until I, came home because I couldn't pay my rent. So you were in college and then you had to stop because you didn't have money. That's, that's what you're saying. Right. And then is that right? Yeah. I literally got evicted. So I came home. You got evicted. Yeah. And, and do you remember that, that moment when that happened that day, that week? Yeah. I, I remember, um, it was like coming home with my tail between my legs, but with the feeling of unfinished business. You know, I was smart. I was getting my grades. You know, I just didn't have a mentor to show me financial aid to pave the way. Like you can get this, this, and this. All you have to do is this, this, and this. I didn't have that um, at Blue Mountain Community College. It was very rural. It was very um, white dominant. You know, then and I just there wasn't a presence of people of color. You know, it was it was basketball. So um, that's why I chose to go there. And yeah. to really get out of my household. So at COCC, you are able to you you you're able to get a scholarship. Can you help other people to know how to find money so money isn't an obstacle? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is to ask. It never hurts to ask questions. You know, like when I applied, I asked, "Is there any scholarships out at COCC that you think I would um, qualify for that I should apply for?" Um, Cause I, that's been my hurdle. And so they was like, well, if you apply on the, this link, it will apply you for all of these scholarships and you can be awarded several. And so I, I did that And this foundation scholarship really just did great things for me. Cause it's like thousands, thousand, 2000 sometimes, um, coming back, you know, to pay for, you know, 
shortcomings in my household to supplement my books, my, uh, I, through COVID, they've helped quite a bit. When it comes to being part of your tribe, when it comes to other Native students and Mm -hmm. their journey, what can you share with this specific population to help them to get to this place where you are? I believe as Native people, we need to not modernize ourselves, but we need to educate ourselves. We need to get ourselves to the platform where we are the doctors, where we are the counselors, where we are helping ourselves. We aren't looking to the outside resources. And so to be able to do that, you need to go to college. And that's what I'm doing. You know, I want to be a community programmer. I want to affect the bigger picture and I want to reach more people. So to do all of that, I need to get my education. So here I am. Yeah. And it's it's wonderful. And and that part of being a, a student, but also being a parent, um, how do you how do you manage that? What what other advice would you offer to parents who are also pursuing their degree? So the biggest part of uh, being a student and a parent is managing your time. Um, there's been times like I've had to turn down social things. I've had to, it hurts, but I have to say, um, can you guys go play with dad for a bit? I need to do this test because they're a lot, eight to 10 at night. Um, I've had to um, take time out of my, you know, social life. I have literally have no social life. I am a mom and a student and an employee. And there's no time for my, myself, really. You know, the self-care I get is um, at work. You know, I make a lot of friends at work. And so I socialize there at work while I'm working. But um, it's managing your time. That's the biggest piece. Manage your time, set a schedule, and follow the schedule so you don't get behind. Yeah, and that's how you've been able to, to manage. And even when I'm sure you have the schedule, I have kids. I only have three. And yeah. um, like, I got half, I got half what you have. And, and one's older between a kid being sick, between there being school events, between mm-hmm. there being doctor's appointments. I mean, that that's a lot. You're, yeah. you, really, you really are remarkable. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I love having these conversations, especially when it comes to non-traditional students. And I think there's more non-traditional students than traditional students where that term is kind of ridiculous because you know what? What? What even is a traditional student? But um, yeah. the the stories are are just so incredible, and um, you know I'm grateful. You know, I want to I want to just ask you, Jacelyn, what was your most uncomfortable experience, and how did you get through it? Like as a student, or oh, just in life, a life lesson of how oh you get through it. I think the most uncomfortable thing for me is being um, stigmatized. Um, you know, I do come from a hardship you know, here in reservation life. But I also believe that I am more than that. I am a person. I have, you know, I have the most perseverance of anybody I know. Um, I, the background I have, I don't, I don't, I don't dwell on it. I use it to power me. Um, and especially with the, um, every child matters movement now, you know, that was my grandparents. And so I really, push myself to better myself in the modern world. You know, I am traditional. I am, I am so traditional, but I am also evolving, you know, with the world, but I'm bringing my traditions with me and stuff. And I, so I just don't like to be stereotyped, stigmatized. And so I really push myself to learn and to be able to evolve with the world as well as carry my traditions onto my children and onto my people. Yeah. You seem very proud. And that comes through clearly. I just want to ask you one more, one more question about coming from, and, and, and anybody, you know, you're all, you're all welcome to answer this. I know, Elijah, you, you shared a little bit of this, but coming from a, a home where you mentioned that you were, you were so poor, I think those are your words that you just, you know, you had very little, right? Um, how do you go from that environment to where you are now? knowing you're worthy and deserving and being able to work through that, you know, how, how do you do it? And I believe you're worthy and deserving just to be very clear. Everybody's born worthy and deserving. Mm-hmm. And we live in a world that sends us a message that makes us feel like less. And when you don't have as much, sometimes that's something that can carry over and make it difficult to feel entitled in the sense of you are 
deserving and worthy of everything you want and desire simply by existing. And that's not always a message that's supported and encouraged, especially growing up with the dynamics you're, you were talking about. So, so how do you find a way? How do you, how do you get to where you are? Is there a specific you know, secret sauce or something that, that we can share or other people can draw from inspiration from? I think it's just following your dreams. You know what you want, now go out and get it. And I knew I didn't want to be poor. I knew I didn't want to be an addict and I knew I didn't want to be homeless. And so I worked hard. Um, I might've gone into this um, college game late, but I got there, you know, and I have my own house. I have several vehicles. I have um, a considered a high end paying job here for the tribe Um, by just working hard and being consistent. You know, I never, you know, I never had quit in me. And so just really working the hardest I can to accomplish everything I wanted. And slowly I'm getting there. I'm 31 and I, I'm, I'm thriving. You are. And, and just to be clear, you're taking the time to be here for a couple hours with us when you have so many other things that you could be doing and so many demands on your time. So again, thank you for being so generous and sharing that. And I recognize that. And anybody who's watching this and participating in this, I think can also recognize this because you're, you're a generous soul with an incredible spirit that shines. So thank you for that. Um, Yeah. Very grateful. Marley, I want to understand a little bit more uh, about you, your, your COCC experience. Can you tell me your COCC experience? Who are some of the people who have helped you the most? Yeah, my COC experience has been um, a sort of familial affair. Um, I went back to school at 26. Um, I tried college and uh, similar. Yeah, it it just wasn't happening. Um, Yeah, um, my mom went back to school, uh, got her GED in her late 40s. and started going to COCC, which really kind of gave me the, the kick in the pants that I kind of needed to um, consider my education again. Um, yeah, so I got to go to school with my mom, which was a weird experience, <laughs> but very fun. Um, so that has a big a big part in my COCC journey. Um, my professors, uh, have been a really big, a really big part of that um, as well. Um, they believe in in me, and they believe in us. Uh, um, they are people who understand the um, the importance of their field, and have taken the time and like made a commitment to to teach, um, which I think is really inspiring. Um, yeah, and I've learned a lot from them, and they've really like shown me things about myself, and 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 encouraged me to to follow dreams that I that I didn't really consider before. Um, things that like I dreamed about when I was six, but that kind of dimmed over time. When it comes to getting involved and finding community at COCC, are there any clubs or organizations that have really helped you? Yeah, I'm also in the Central Oregon Psychology Enthusiast Club. Um, That's super fun. It's um, always a fun and kind of dynamic crew of people with, with lots of different interests, but psychology kind of brings us all together. Um, we have really cool discussions and guest speakers. Um, and then I also am a campus ambassador for Planned Parenthood. Um, so I got involved with that like a year ago through my public health professor. Um, and I've done a lot of really fun events, even through the pandemic, we've really like gotten creative about outreach. Um, I've met community leaders all over um, and from all different branches, like kind of doing this shared work together. Is it easy to get involved with activities and organizations? 
Yeah, the hardest part is showing up for the second meeting, I think. It's um it's super easy to go. You show up and then it's like the intimidation factor, right? Like of the next one. Like, oh I I I like these people now and like now I I have I have to go back. <laughs> um yeah, yeah, that's the hardest part. Yeah, that's nice that you found these people. And then and then um had, did you run into any academic troubles or financial troubles, Marley? The first time I went to school, I went to a private art school. I was I was following what I thought was my dream. I, I sort of felt like cast aside when I left. I'm paying for school myself. Um, I've worked retail for eight years. It was hard to go from uh, the stability of that and and working 50 hours a week to, oh my gosh, I'm in school and I can't do that anymore. Like my physical body doesn't work that way anymore. So that was, that was challenging. And I really had to get creative about finding, find ways to make it happen, supplementing with like house sitting or watching people's dogs um, with my financial aid and scholarships just to kind of to keep the train running. Yeah. That's that's a that's that's challenging. Raul, I have a couple of questions for you. Uh Raul, when it comes to getting involved with clubs and organizations, I saw that you're involved with the Latinx groups. Is that is that something that you, that's given you a lot of joy? Uh yeah, it's it's been a little bit since I've, you know, been involved, but uh I I joined when well, I got I don't remember how I heard from it, but, uh, I, uh, talked into, I forgot her name now, but, uh, yeah, I, I first started getting kind of like involved and, uh, I actually got a scholarship, uh, I guess you can say last second. And that really helped me. Where'd you get a scholarship? Uh, I got it through one of the Latin X one. I forgot which term it was, but I I got a, I got a scholarship last second there, and I think at that time I was paying school out of pocket, and this was going to college was very last second to me, so I didn't really get to prepare myself very well financially that is. Raul, give me just like a really quick summary. Like how did you decide to go to college? Why wasn't that part of your path? And then how did you find the money to go? I didn't think about college until possibly my, I think it was my junior year. My buddy Duncan, he's, he's been my best friend for many, many years. And it wasn't until my senior year until he kind of helped me out uh, with the FAFSA, you know, we kind of got all that figured out, made a plan essentially last second. I didn't think I was going to gonna really make it or head that direction. And it still is difficult for me because my, my family, I guess you can say that we're very, very poor. We've, we've been really struggling financially. I made the decision to go to college and just to really better myself and to make my parents proud. That's, that's a big one for me. Thanks for sharing that. So their expectation was that you're going to work and help with the family, help help you know contribute money to to the family, right? That was the plan. But then you made the decision to go to college for the long term benefit, as opposed to the short term of contributing financially. Is that is that accurate? Yes, that is correct. In college. As opposed to high school, I wasn't working and going to school. I still struggle to this day, time managing, but I've definitely improved on just being a better student and just really contributing to my family. And they've helped me quite a bit through college. Have they supported the decision of you to go to college and pursue this path? They've supported me, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and it's pretty remarkable because you know, you want to own a business, you want to, you want to have a shop, like you aspire to do some, some pretty extraordinary things, Raul. And, and it's amazing that you only grabbed onto this. It seems like just at the last second, almost right. Right. Exactly. 
and then working in working you were you're mentioning you work where do you where do you work again i work at a athletic club it's essentially just a gym just a fancy fancier kind of gym right but at that club you meet a lot of people who are business owners potential mentors right right and is there someone in particular that's really helped you that inspires you um scott loring he's a gentleman that he's him and i talk quite a bit and he's someone that i look up to what does he do um let's see he's he's retired right now but he is to i i think he was uh, it doesn't matter. Say. It's 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 okay. But you have someone you can look up to. You have you have other business owners who can inspire you. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And then financially, let me ask you one more question. Then we're we're gonna I'm gonna work to wrap things up. But when okay. it comes to the financial, when it comes to the financial challenges that your family's facing and that you faced, has COCC been there to help you? You know, when it comes to also tuition, but anything additional, are there other resources you've been able to take advantage of? CSCC has has been there for me. Uh, I mean, I don't think I have. I've used like tutoring, like those kind of student resources, um, but I don't. I don't think I've seeked out kind of just enough to, you know, see see a counselor or just to kind of get a little bit more assistance there. I do remember my instructor, one of our instructors from school, he was talking to us in class. He was saying, like, this was before the pandemic. Uh, there was, like, uh, the CAPS. CAPS? I forgot what it, what it was called. But, uh, yeah, there's just resources out there for me. I didn't. I feel like I didn't have the need to reach out quite yet, but you know, it's still something to consider for me. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. Um, thanks. I really appreciate that. Uh, does anybody, does anybody live on campus? Does anybody live in the housing? So Elijah, you've lived, you've lived in the housing. Um, just give me like a two second, Elijah, um, to live on campus. Um, tell me, how has living on campus helped your COCC experience? I just came out of like a very uh, chaotic home life. And it was my first time living uh, on my own other than like fishing and like work that I'd done <laughs> in random places. And so I was in an area where I could really easily eat three meals a day. I had like a bed that I could sleep in and I was right next to all the classes that I need to do. And on top of all that, Bend is beautiful. Like that's, it continues to be one of the most beautiful places I've ever lived. I guess that just really briefly sums it up. It's it's just like beautiful, really safe space for you to focus on your education. How were you able to pay for your housing? No scholarships out of high school. Really, really bad student. Couldn't really apply for anything. So I had the FAFSA, and then uh, I was short like three grand. So I heard a radio ad uh, to uh, go work in a cannery in Alaska. And it seems like it would pay okay. I didn't have a lot of work experience. So I called them. And the next thing I know is on a plane. And I worked like uh, 20 hour work days for the whole summer, like right out of high school and made the money that I needed to, to pay for the uh, Wiki of Hall, the dorm experience at COCC. It's a cannery? Yes. <laughs> what would you do? Um, I, I would uh, basically, you know, you know, Deadliest Catch? Yeah. Did you oh, see yeah. that? Like the, that the Time Bandit? Okay. They, they bring in a ton of salmon and basically there's like a giant vacuum and you just suck all the fish out of the hole of the boat and someone has to sort them. And so I would sort them. And then I would also work in this like assembly line in like full rain gear. They called it an indexer. It's just a fancy word for someone who operates like a fish guillotine. I was working in a cannery. I was preparing fish to become uh, canned salmon. It was not the most illustrious job I've ever had, but I paid my bills and I'm really proud of it. Taught me resilience, taught me to believe in myself. Best thing I ever did though. Like it honestly gave me the opportunity to step outside of the environment that uh, was really kind of like preventing me from being able to think 
beyond uh, all of like the structures and the ways that I was looking at the world. Great experience. You'd recommend that to others? Living in Wikiup Hall, 100%, and in general, just finding a way to uh, meet your basic needs when you're <laughs> pursuing your education. You, you've got to be able to eat, sleep, and uh, just focus on yourself because learning is it's, it's all up here, and it's really hard to do when you feel like you, you don't know where you're going to sleep at night or when you're going to eat next. So, yeah. That sounds amazing. So you'd work t- like 20 hours a day? Yes. Yes. It was brutal. Yeah. It's fishing. So it's kind of just like as the fish come in and, and like peak season, there's just so many fish. Right. So you're, so you're not really, you're just sleeping and you're just dealing with fish. I, yeah. And it's like out in the middle of nowhere. So like I was in uh knack Bristol Bay. You, you literally can't drive there. You can only fly in on like a really small rickety plane and, uh, you uh fish you drink and i think i think that's really about it you you can also be outdoorsy but that was it was it was it was like a challenging environment for me personally at least like a lot of the uh uh it it's it's a tough it's a tough environment you know a lot of the people who work there they're really strong they're really impressive people who who work in that in that industry and you get paid, how much you get paid an hour? Oh, it's, it's minimum wage. Really? You only make good money because you hit overtime in two days. Gotcha. And then you get time and a half. And so you're making like, I don't know if minimum wage was like $11. I was making like 20 something an hour, which was way more than I'd ever made uh, coming out of high school. So, right. So that's yeah. how you paid. And then you went, so you went from the cannery. So just to like give a quick summary, went from, I wanted it to be in your words, then I'm going to just wrap this. I know we went a tiny bit lo- longer, but like your, your words, and I, I just want to kind of give you a kind of a model, but like growing up in this unstable environment, then going from homelessness to somehow discovering a path in college, improving your grades enough to become a Ford Foundation Scholar recipient, to then going to uh, an amazing school, going to... Um, to um, Lewis and Clark to now pursuing possibly a graduate degree. Is that right? Yeah, I start grad school uh, okay. in September. This is crazy, dude. Can you just like give me the summary in your words? So Elijah, I just want to understand your path so other people can understand. You know, you started where? I started bouncing around the Willamette Valley as an adolescent, uh, barely getting through high school. Um, and working a lot with my mom, who's the janitor and in, uh, fast food restaurants, you know, McDonald's, KFC, some of my first jobs that weren't, uh, with my family. And I didn't have the money to pay for college. I was not a, uh, fantastic student, so I couldn't apply for a lot of scholarships. And so I went to Alaska and I worked in a cannery out in the middle of nowhere, but it was really beautiful. You know, summertime, the sun doesn't set. So that's cool. (laughs) <laughs> um, and I made the money that I needed to live in Wikia Paul. I had my freshman year as a community college student at COCC, and I built a community for myself there. I found out what it took to be a student, be a first-generation college student, how to get comfortable with success. That's the hardest part about being first-generation, is believing that you can do it and seeing yourself doing it and not being scared of it from there. I had really good mentors, like I mentioned, Rebecca Walker Sands, people who taught me how to write, taught me how to articulate myself. Those individuals who really put me in this position where I can talk about everything I've gone through helped me uh, advocate for myself and pursue scholarships like the Ford Family Foundation uh, that have paved the way for where you see me now, pursuing graduate school at uh, OHSU. Each each of you is amazing. I just, I, I want, I want more, but I'm not going to keep you much longer. Um, I want to ask, I, I, Marla, I have one more question that then we're done. I'll go five more minutes. Then, 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 then we're going to be done. All the technical stuff just made this run a tiny bit long. Marley, I just need to know you love COCC so much. And I want you to tell me what are the three things about COCC that you love the most? Community number one. Um, there's always a friend, um, whether it's your professor, whether it's your 
peer, whether it's someone in a club, there's always someone who's like willing and eager to to be your friend. One of the the coolest parts about community college is that you you have such a diverse experience. Um, everybody's coming from somewhere and everyone's really open about where they've been. You really get to know people and where they are coming from. That's, there's just something about being there. It's it's not too serious, right? It's like you can call your professor by their first name. They'll make a joke with you. Your classes are small. Everyone's excited to be there. Yeah, and everyone's just having a, a pretty good time. <laughs> Thank you. Stacy. your favorite thing about COCC? My favorite thing is probably the... Um, community and support from the professors and everyone there is so friendly and welcoming like um, Marley said. Raul, what's your favorite thing about COCC? Community and instructors. My instructors have been there. Paul Pelly, he's he's a great guy. When I started the program, he was the first guy I talked to. He's proud of me and he's proud of all the other students that finished through the program. So it's definitely great having those kinds of support people to interact with, just really talk to. That's awesome. Raul, I want to figure out how to find some, some local business owners. Like I'm going to, I want to follow up with Buffy after and see like, how can we connect you with a couple people who are in that space or even talking to that person who you work with and saying like, do you know anyone who has a shop, you know, who's, who started a shop or just if you identified a couple shops, that you'd want to get to know those people because, um, dude, I just want you to like, kill it, like crush it. I want you just to dominate. Like, I want to talk to you in 10 years and, and you can tell me the story about how you're building race cars and you have this incredible, you know, shop and you're open in a second and a third, you know, like, I just want, dude, I want you to just, Oh, I want you to be, I want you to get it all. Okay. I want all of you to get it all. It's great. Um, you're all so exciting. I have my last question and then we're going to wrap this up and you're all so generous and I'm grateful, grateful, grateful. Um, if you could go back in time and see high school, you Jason, if you can see high school, you, uh, go back to go back to warm Springs, Oregon to Madras high school and see 15 year old you or 14 year old you and go, Hey, Jason, I need to tell you a secret. What would you tell you? that would help that would help you to get to where you are today. I think if I seen 14, 15 year old me, I would say plan, talk to somebody. You know, I was a shy kid, but the college is so easy to navigate after you know who to talk to. So plan, talk to people, get to know how do you get there easier. You know, I granted I my path was hard, but I want to tell 15 year old me, hey, talk to so and so, talk to so and so, because make it easier. Tell, give me specifics. Like, tell me, like, who do, who do you get to like give these hacks to? Like, tell 15 year old you, talk to this person. Like, give me that. That would be great. That'd be great. Okay. I was telling 15 year old Jace Lane, go talk to admissions. Admissions will be your friends, they will be your mentors. They can help you give you the secret to success of college. I mean, admissions is how you get into college, is how you pay for college, is how to navigate your way and make your path easier through successful college years. Um, 15 year old me just went on a whim and I, um, you know, I knew I went to college, but I didn't know how to make it happen. So plan better, Jaceline. 15 year old Jaceline, go talk to the admissions at college, talk to financial aid, talk to any and everyone you can. Because, you know, your success really depends on um, the, how your ability to pay for it. And there's money there, right? Yes, there's tons of money. Um, I, even today, you know, there's so many scholarships that I could apply for, but I just, I don't have the time. And COCC just, they makes it easy. Um, my scholarship, my financial aid, I really don't have to seek anything else out. You know, it's, everything's paid for, for now. But if I want to look further, I really need to you know, re- do my research. Yeah, that's awesome. Raul, if you can go back to high school and see uh, Raul at, at Crook County High School, <laughs> you get to see 14-year-old Raul, and you're like, hey, Raul, I got to tell you something. What would you tell you that would have helped? I feel like one of the things that I really think about a lot is 
just doing better in high school and I'm definitely talking and just being a lot more open. Uh, I was also very shy in school. And before high school, I went to a really small school. Uh, and so the transition from, you know, elementary, middle school to high school, it was, it was completely different seeing just more people and it's just, it's a different experience, but I feel like if I really push myself in high school, the way I, I am now in college and apply for scholarships, I would be just less stressed. I'm always constantly stressed about, you know, paying the bills. I help my parents out with the bills, but even then I don't have, you know, a lot to myself other than, you know, school, really. But. Yeah. So getting that help, there's help out there. You just have to ask for it. And I think that's absolutely people don't always understand or they, or they, they're uncomfortable asking for help. But if that help is there, take advantage of it. Right. Like, absolutely. Absolutely. Stacy, if you could go back in time and give you a tip, what would you tell high school Stacy? I would tell myself to not be shy, you know, go look for opportunities. And also, um, you know, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to you know, seek, you know, for help and look for um, people that will support you. That's awesome. Marley, if you can go back in time and give you a tip, high school you, I know you have big dreams and you've had some awesome life experiences. What would you tell you? Um, embrace change um, and, and, and enjoy it. Um, it's going to be even better than you imagined. I love it. Yeah. Elijah, if you could go back in time and see high school Elijah, freshman high school Elijah back in, where were you, Elijah? You were, you were at Crescent Valley High School. It's been a lifetime since then, man, right? I can imagine. Um, what would you tell 14-year-old Elijah that would have helped? One, um, it's okay to be queer. Two, don't assimilate. Um, and don't be ashamed. I think that the hardest thing for me in coming into myself and being someone who's like capable of pursuing my education was getting over a lot of the shame that I felt, uh, the different things that I'd experienced, the adversity that I'd faced. And just feeling like no one would ever be able to relate to me. No one would be able to understand. And the truth is, is that the stories that I have and the experiences that I have, one, have shaped me into who I am today, but are also a lot of the reasons why I'm able to connect with people like you all and feel so inspired and feel community in spaces like a community college where it's like this weird kind of like mystical transition period where people from so many different walks of life come together and like the world is just full of opportunity. There's so, there's so many different directions people go. And it's, I, I, yeah, I think that's probably what I'd say. The, you broke up in the beginning. The, so if you could go back in time and tell you, what's the first thing you said you would tell you? That it's okay to oh, lie? It's okay. it's okay to be queer. Oh, it's okay to be queer. We didn't even get into that. That's We well, can get into a lot of stuff. There's a lot of challenges out there. <laughs> Man, we got it. We we only touched the surface, Elijah. But but before we go, because I was gonna wrap up, tell me how how do you find your space being queer, being comfortable? Is, is COCC a place where you felt community? Uh, have you been able to be you? Yes, there's there's support you can find. You can find right. uh, you can you can find people who will understand you and meet you where you're at. Okay, so if everybody feels good. I want to I want to thank everybody for participating. I want to thank you all for being here and being so generous and opening up your your life and sharing your COCC and and life experiences. If there's anyone out there who can relate, who has additional questions, who wants to connect, you can reach out to anybody in this panel. You can also reach out to anyone at COCC. They're in your corner. They want to help you to find your passion, your path. Clearly there are people here who have demonstrated this. And I'm someone who's also in your corner. If there's anything I could do to help any of you, please reach out to me. I'm happy to do whatever I can 
to be in your corner. I'm so grateful to be here with Central Oregon Community College students. Thank you, Marley. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Raul. Thank you, Jacelyn. Thank you, Elijah. And thank all of you for being here. I'm Harlan Cohn. This has been a college conversation, and I'm grateful to be in your corner. Thanks, everyone.